I want to start off by saying thank you to everybody who's been supporting my channel as of late. I appreciate you guys for all the likes and the comments and subscribes. Thank you guys for coming to join the Discord, being part of the community. Hopefully we can continue to grow this community into something bigger and greater than what it is now. People are sitting here talking, having a good time, playing in, in Team Stacks and what have you. Just talking every day about random stuff every now and then. I appreciate you guys, man. We're going to dive into this. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all those around the world. Welcome back to another Gardevoir Master's Guide version 2, our very second one. Super excited to bring it to you guys. This is the updated, reworked Gardevoir at its finest, at the best possible solo queue environment that I can bring it to you. Let's get into it, Let's check out her abilities and see what's different. So her abilities, in its sense, they all do the same thing, right? They have been nerfed, they have been buffed. Synchronize, for a lot of people that don't realize what this does, this will inflict a status effect upon the opposing Pokemon that gives Gardevoir a status effect. So if you decrease my movement speed or damage over time condition, the same will be applied to the enemy Pokemon. Now this also has an internal cooldown of 9 seconds, it's not stated here, but it is 9 seconds, okay? Keep that in mind. Also, her basic attack, fully boosted auto, it will decrease the enemy's special defense, alright? So that's there as well by 10%, okay? In case you guys didn't know that either. Now, this is when it comes to her bread and butter. You have Psychic or Moonblast. Psychic will lower the opposing Pokemon's special defense by 20%, up into a cap of 60% if they stay in the area for the full duration. This ability reduces the movements or moves cooldown when you upgrade it. It's not something that's like, oh my god, so much damage. It does damage over time, but it's not... A ridiculous amount you know what I mean it's like a little tick damage it's 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 there you know what I mean they buffed it no one still uses it we all go with moon blast let's be honest moon blast is your bread and butter because it is that short that short and sweet stun that it's a single target stun in which it will stun the first Pokemon hit by it and anyone that's behind that target will also take damage in a cone you know what I mean but when you upgrade it it gives you a shield so nine out of ten when a Pokemon is jumping on your face and you get a shield this is where it comes from right this is the ability that gives yourself a shield, in case you guys don't know. Now, they did nerf it, so now it is a 7 second cooldown opposed from a 6 second cooldown, but that's about it. They did not nerf the, the stun duration or anything, they just nerfed the ability in a sense where you can't have it up every 6 seconds, now it's 7 seconds, okay? Psy Shock, Future Sight. Level 5 Gardevoir, hear me now. Level 5 Gardevoir does the most damage at B's, I guarantee you, opposed to absolute single target damage. At least I think so currently in this game. You come out of that bush, at level 5, you're ganking for beer tick, you're ganking for B's, what have you. If the enemy team does not know you're here, let's say they have an enemy absolute or enemy talent flame, and they're also trying to rotate for B's. They dive into those B's, they're also diving into side shock damage. They cannot get out of that alive unless they have a jack button. You know what I mean? It's just one of those situations because you gotta keep in mind your team is also fighting for bees there too. So if you get there at the perfect time with Psy Shock, you're doing an immense amount of burst where they can't retaliate considering how far range this ability actually is. And you will see, you will see when you sit down and play Gardevoir and you actually sit down and pay attention to your positioning where you need to be. This ability is really, really strong right now. And the way it also works is every time this ability does damage to an enemy Pokemon, the ability cooldown lowers. You know what I mean? Whereas Future Sight is also really, really strong. We all know this, but Future Sight gives you movement speed when you land this ability. It also halves the ability cooldown if you actually land the ability. But when you upgrade this ability, it resets it fully if you land this on a Pokemon. So you can activate your Unite move and just spam Future Sights on Pokemon, which sounds really, really good, right? It's a lot of fun. It gives you a lot of movement speed, a lot of mobility, but I like Psy Shock just because it gives you that kiting. Like you can kite with Psy Shock, you can get better positioning with Psy Shock. It's really, really strong. Both of them are really, really good. Just gotta keep in mind they nerfed Psy Shock by 11% damage, but you don't really notice it. Let's be honest. Anyhow, we're gonna dive into this video. For those of you who are here for Dragonite code or Dragonite, you know, trying to get the Dragonite code to get Dragonite, you know what I'm talking about. It's in the video. Good luck for you guys who's out there looking for it. Either way, Merry Christmas, Happy New Year. Let's get into it. I think it's about time we sit down, we do a brand new Master's Guide for Gardevoir, considering her rework, her updated abilities, her kit, everything's different about her right now and she is dominating the metagame. Hey, but if you don't believe me, let's find out, let's get into it. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon to all those around the world, man. Welcome back to a brand new Master's Guide version 2 for Gardevoir. 
Master rank coming through the jungle right now, having a good time. Getting off our first gank a second ago, but sadly enough, I forgot to hit the record button. You know how this works. But hey, we're still here for it. Either way, we're coming down for our, for our second gank coming down for, for Beer Tick. And what I want to tell you guys is, with Gardevoir right now in the jungle, nobody can contest you at B-Spawn. Nobody. Not a single Pokemon in the game right now can contest you at B-Spawn. Correct me if I'm wrong, but... Coming out the jungle, low 5, you pick up Psyshock. Throw Psyshock on Beer Tick, throw Psyshock on Bees. You think they're going to fight in that? Sure, they will, because they, they want Bees too, right? And they're not going to notice it at the time. Let's be honest, no one notices they're sitting in Gardevoir's uh, Psyshock or damage. They, they don't know. So they're going to sit here. They're going to be like, oh, cool, let's get Bees. And all of nowhere, you just delete the enemy team. Level 5. So what happened was, developers is all like, oh, man, that's too strong. So they nerfed Psyshock damage down by 11%. Cool. Think, it, think it's really changing things, to be honest with you? Not really. Not really. Especially when you have Pokemon out here who can do 135k a game when it comes to Gardevoir and or Venusaur, because Venusaur is still freaking busted. But, at the same time, level 5 Gardevoir coming out, attacking bees, no one's contesting you. As long as you have two key things. You land your ability, and positioning. Just like here. Like at the end of the day, I wanted this Rotom, but hey, everyone wants to fight, Toss an alt in there. I don't care. We're getting kills. We're getting the goal. We're getting the road, and we're moving on. You know what I mean? Gardevoir right now is just really, really good. And people like me, people like you, who've been playing Gardevoir since day one, we've been bullied enough. You know what I mean? Like every time you pick this Pokemon, you go down a bot lane and/or top lane. Forget about jungle because if you go jungle, you're trolled. And remember those days? Y'all yeah, remember the days? But even if we go in lane, what happens? Your lane partner, none of that's end, doesn't even want to lane with you. They leave you as soon as you die, for example. And then you're stuck down there doing it by yourself. And then you're, you're, you're SOL, you know what I mean? Here, now she's been changed, she's been reworked, where essentially you see Gardevoir almost every game. And when you do see Gardevoir, some people don't even know she's been changed yet. But those that do, now it's your turn to bully them. Because they've been bullying us since day one. Like this Dragonite right here. He's gonna constantly get stunned by Moon Blast regardless of how many times he decides to jump on me. Thankfully, my Dragonite was actually paying attention. We get a little dance off, it's fine, it's all good. But, they do nerf Moon Blast, by the way. They lower the cooldown, or make the cooldown longer. I'm sorry for the dog barking in the background. They lower, they make the Moon Blast cooldown longer. Other than that, though... Oh man, it's a quick game. That's unfortunate. It's alright, though, we're gonna dive into another one. We're gonna have a good time. We're gonna get to another game. As I was saying, guys, what they've done with Moonblast is they've lowered, they've prolonged the cooldown. So it's six seconds, now it's a seven second ability. They haven't shortened the stun duration or anything, they just made the cooldown longer for the ability itself, okay? Just keep that in mind. Now, when it comes to playing this Pokemon, you have two different types of abilities. You have Psyshock, you have Future Sight. You gotta keep in mind, both abilities work just fine. I enjoy playing Psyshock, I enjoy playing Future Sight. The reason why we're playing Psyshock today is because they nerfed that ability. They nerfed Psyshock. They nerfed it by 11%. Now, I think the reason that they did that was because, keep in mind, Gardevoir has been reworked, right? So she evolves sooner, she gets her, she gets to go to Gardevoir at level 9, she gets her abilities one level earlier, so she picks up Psyshock at level 5. You're coming out of that bush at level 5 to gank for Beer Tick, gank for Bees, what have you. You know what I mean? You pop a Psyshock down, no Pokemon in the game, guarantee you, can contest you. Because you do too much damage. And I think that's probably why they decided to nerf it. I could be wrong, but that's probably what might have been a good idea. You know what I mean? Like, you come out of that bush level 5, drop Psyshock, what are they going to do? Fight you with bees? Yeah, they're going to fight you with bees. But 9 out of 10, most people don't even realize they're taking damage from Psyshock. They're taking damage from Future Sight before it's too late, right? Let's be honest here. So you drop Psyshock on top of bee spawn. Abs enemy Absol player, enemy Talon Flame player, whatever. They're sitting here, they're diving in into bees as soon as they get here, and then they're also diving into Psy Shock because you're sitting in the bush coming down for a gank. They don't see you. You know what I mean? These are things you gotta think about. This Pokemon does so much for your team now because she comes online so much earlier in the game, and she's so much stronger now. Where this Dragonair is gonna find out here if, if she decides to Dragon Dance on me one more time. Oh, good, sweet. Get to it a Moon Blast, and we just delete her with Psy Shock because I was always paying attention. My team was actually capitalizing on it, and we get another kill because they was not paying attention to my, where my positioning was. English is hard today. But at the end of the day, we able to grab two B spawns, right? Kill four Pokemon 
for one death. That's nuts. And Dragonair still doesn't respect the amount of damage that we do here. We get a stun, side shock off, and then we have a Greninja here in front of me as well. It's just like, you guys have been bullying Gardevoir since day one that she's come out, right? And now that she has a rework, a lot of people don't even realize she's been reworked. A lot of people still don't care about Gardevoir until she does damage to your face. And what do you do in response? You die, right? She just deletes you, essentially. But you gotta keep in mind, she's still a super squishy. So when it comes to these items and your positioning, positioning with this Pokemon is key, more so than Sidueye, because unlike the Sidueye, Gardevoir brings a lot more to the table, a lot more to your team. She has crowd control, she has huge damage. Her Unite move is one of the best Unites in the entire game, where you can go ahead and do things like that all the time. You know what I mean? And the best part about it is there, there are players like you, like me, like your grandma, who just throw out the Unite move, regardless of how many people you catch in it. One or two people, it doesn't matter. But then there are other Gardevoir players who like to save the Unite move until there's like a four people or a five stack that they can catch into it. It doesn't matter. Just throw it out there if you can get objectives, if you can get a couple kills to score a goal, to get rid of a goal. Just throw your Unite move out there. Just always be mindful of your positioning with Gardevoir. You have to respect the enemy team Regardless if they respect you or not, because we know no one's ever respected Gardevoir. They just bullied you. You know what I mean? In lane. Even your own teammates, none of the ten. If you if they kill you in lane, your teammates generally leave you and they go somewhere else. They don't want to lane with you anymore. Come on now. Remember those old days? Now, you see Gardevoir in pretty much every game. Yeah, that's right, Garchomp. I have no idea what Garchomp thought he was gonna do there, be able to take me down. I don't I don't get it. But but now it's your turn to bully the enemy team. As long as you're respectable. In terms of their damage. Here, I'm trying to stop Guard or what do you call it, Greninja from scoring. I know I'm putting myself in a bad situation, but hey, we're, we're here for it. We stop him from scoring long enough for my team to get down here. And guess what? We capitalize on that kill and we survive. Why do we survive? Because I know Focus Band hasn't procced yet. And the thing about it is, they don't know what items I'm carrying. You know what I'm saying? So Greninja is going to sit here. Blow all his cooldowns on me to try to take me out. Focus man procs, he gets stunned and side shot to death. You know, that's great. He didn't see it coming. I knew it was happening, but he didn't know. You know what I mean? There's so many different item builds you can run on her still. But personally, in this game particularly, it's Shell Bell for me. Shell Bell is generally my bread and butter when it comes to Gengar, when it comes to Gardevoir. I love Shell Bell because it gives you a little bit of healing, gives you more cooldown for your abilities. It's nice. You can replace with Wise Glasses if you choose to. But I like Shell Bell, alright? So I do Shell Bell, Focus Band, and the New Choice Specs. All the time when I play Gardevoir. Sometimes I swap out the, uh, what do you call it? The, the glasses for Amplifier. That way I'll run Amplifier, I'll run Shell Bell, and then I'll run the um, Focus Band. Amplifier allows you to have your Unite move up sooner. Last choice, bro. We won't talk about it, like, I don't even know what that was. But in any case, man, Psy Shock lowers the cooldown, okay, listen, it lowers the cooldown each time you hit an enemy, alright? So when you're, when Psy Shock is dealing damage, you're lowering the cooldown every time it hits a, a Pokemon, alright? Keep that in mind. Whereas Future Sight's a little bit different. Future Sight is really, really strong, yes. Psy Shock is very strong, yes. There's two different playstyles. Future Sight, when you hit a target, it gives you increased movement speed. But if you miss a target, what happens? Now you're sitting there waiting. The only thing you got left is Moon Blast. Whereas Psy Shock, for me personally, if I'm kiting away from you, I can Psy Shock, kite, Moon Blast you, and be, and be safe. Because 9 out of 10, if you have Psy Shock, and the Pokemon is chasing you, you're doing damage. You're doing great. You're giving yourself space, distance between the enemy Pokemon and you, and enough time for your team to come down, possibly, to save you, if you need saving. Whereas, you have to land Future Sight for it to be viable, which is fine. But in a solo queue environment, it's a lot harder to do that and be successful and have to 1v5 with that ability, you know what I mean? Whereas Psy Shock, you can drop it into a team, you deal damage, you can drop it again and deal damage. Now, the benefit to running Future Sight, which I enjoy, is if you Future Sight within your ultimate, your Unite move, it lowers the cooldown every time you land Future Sight. I'm about to get caught here. God dang it. I get to stun the Greninja off, but it doesn't matter. 
because I realized I forgot about it. Venusaur is not running Petal Dance, he is running Solar Beam and Giga Drain. Weird combination, but you know, each their own. We're still winning the game. It's alright. Everybody gets a death, it's cool, it happens. But regardless if you actually get yourself killed, whether or not it's in here you make a mistake, and in real life you make a mistake, League of Legends, any other game you're playing, it doesn't matter because those mistakes, you're supposed to learn from them, right? You're supposed to get better when you make those mistakes, regardless how big those mistakes are. The important part is not to repeat them. And it's hard to do when you're sitting here playing a mobile in solo queue, but you guys understand what I'm saying. I do pop a Unite move out. I think it's probably the best idea for me to do this here. Yep. Just so I can get that movement speed boost and that little shield and roll out. Because I'm trying to get to this goal as quickly as I can. Although I have 15 points, I need Greninja to score first where I can go over this barricade. So I'm trying to get down some more Pokeballs here from the Stantley before I go in. Which is fine, you know what I mean? Because I'm, I'm ready to get myself KO'd. As long as I can score, I'm going to get KO'd. It doesn't matter. Well, I'm good. Now, question though. Greninja. Oh, okay, I see. I see, I see. It ran out. It ran out. Like, the, the Arcuno ran out before you can score. It is what it is. <laughs> but either way, hopefully you guys do enjoy playing Gardevoir still. Because I was very excited to bring you this. I'm very excited to play Gardevoir. I've been playing Gardevoir for a very long time. I do have my wins, I do have my losses, just like you, we're only human. But either way, I think she's one of the most fun Pokemon in the game right now in terms of special attackers. I think I'm having more fun with Gardevoir and Serena than I am any other Pokemon. But I, Dragonite has come out and I'm very much enjoying Dragonite. I just hope you guys can actually give all these Pokemon a chance before you write them off, before someone says, oh they're really really bad or whatever. Just pick them up, give them a shot, you know what I mean, get better with them. Because you can, no matter what. Either way, this has been Paul's Place. Hope you guys smash that like button. Come join that Discord. Tell me I suck. It's fine. Merry Christmas, boys. And girls out there. Happy New Year. And stay safe. For all those out there still doing Christmas shopping. Because, hey, Christmas, New Year. Or, sorry. <laughs> New Year's is right around the corner. You got Christmas right around the corner. And then we have, what? The day before Christmas is tomorrow. It's crazy. Christmas Eve. But anyway... I'll catch you guys in the very next video. I'm gonna head out.